Speaking of a guy that has many frequent different hairstyles. I'm on with great hair. Here you go. My there guy. he is. I'm on with great hair. Here you go. It is Vera, known as Cheeto. What's going on, Cheeto? Nothing much. Just same, same. Eating good, training hard, and can't wait. Couple more weeks to fucking kick some ass. <laughs> there we go. Hey, hey, so, so yesterday, Anthony, uh, we went out for dinner last night. We're driving down the motorway, the freeway, and uh, I get a FaceTime. I think it was from Perillo. It was, was it from you? me. Oh, it, it was from me. What do you mean? I picked, I picked up straight away. You pick up his call, you didn't pick up my call with next to each other. So that says a lot about oh, oh. <laughs> it's okay. It's no. okay. I was driving on the freeway, bro. Bro, you pick up his quick. Mine went fully. <laughs> Every single ring went through. But it's okay. Next no. time you call, I'm gonna just be like this. No, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't the case. So I'm driving on the freeway. You call, right? And I thought I can't pick up, and then Perillo calls, and I'm like, well, clearly they're together because they're quite the two little you know, there's an expression in England, we call them bum chums. You're a couple of little bum chums. I'm like, they're both FaceTiming me. Maybe there's an issue. Maybe they need me to protect them. They need Big Banky B to save the day. So I answer, uh, Anthony, and there's Rockhold, Cheeto, Perillo on Christmas Day in a what looked to be a garage, a garage. Was it a garage? We're, we're, we're in Perillo's garage just talking shit. Just talking. Perilla was hammered. He, he could hardly <laughs> string his sentence together. He had a pair of headphones on. You guys were having fun, were you? Merry Christmas, mate. Merry Christmas, brother. Yeah. I finished training and I went I went straight to his house and we just sit down in the garage for a couple of hours and just talk shit. Nice, nice, nice. How was your day? It was good. It was good. Uh training today. Kids happy for Christmas. They they got a couple of goodies and Pretty much just keeping it up. Yeah. Do you you hate training through? I hate training through the holidays. I can't stand it. I like since I was a little kid, I give zero fucks about holidays. I'm not excited about Christmas or my birthday or <laughs> I'm just as a father, I make the kids happy. I right. I do the whole Santa Claus thing. I make them write the letter, but that's for them. On Christmas Day. I wrestle, I lift weights. On Christmas Eve, I ran like probably 11 miles. I was just, I don't. 11 miles. Yeah. And that's because I already caught my 14 miles because I'm in camp. Out of camp. Mm -hmm. So out of camp last week when I didn't have a fight, I ran 14 miles on Sunday. Wow. 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 That's amazing. Well done, buddy. Um. What did you get the missus or the kids? Did you get them anything nice yesterday? Um, the kids got up. They asked for clothes, shoes, um, early couple toys, couple couple like Barbies and dolls, some some shit like that. Nacho got uh, just clothes and shoes. They they don't they don't really do much toys anymore these days. <laughs> they want clothes. They want oh, mm -hmm. and Ellie literally asked for. The same shoes I have, so we match now. Oh, nice. Nice. What, Smith. uh, yeah, well, I was, I was thinking, like, how do you, because I want to talk about the fight so damn bad, but what do you, what do you think about when you, like, look at fighting Corey Sandhagen? It seems like you've kind of dealt with a bunch of funky ass styles. Like, O'Malley's got a different style and, and, Dominic Cruz is impossible to 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 try to deal with or emulating training camp. You know what I mean? So then now you got another funky ass, difficult style, or do you just look at them all the same? Honestly, at least since I'm with Perillo, my best approach is like I don't worry too much about tall, small. You know, we do like for example, if I'm fighting a small, compact guy, we we spar. A small compact guy, right? Now we're fighting a tall, lanky guy. We will bring into a couple times a week a guy pretty much his size. But the real, real uh, approach that I learned from him, it's more like if I put up on layers in between fights, by the time I'm in camp, I'm like levels ahead that I was a fight before. So, you know, the guy can be tall or small. My job is gonna be sharper. 
my right hand is going to be stronger. You know, my body just my kicks, like, I'm just a little better than, than I was for the cruise fight. And yes, now I have to fight a big guy. You know, I just got to be patient and, and, and find my range with him because at the end of the day, I can have all the sparring in the world. When you go and fight it and fight the guy and that's, that's guy's in front of you, doesn't matter how many tall guys you spar. This is a brand new tall guy that you got to figure it out. So it's pretty much mental. I don't, mm. I don't really right. worry about my opponent's size or what he does. I'm more worried about make sure I'm in shape, which, which I am, and just keep my mind right till February 18th. But right. hey, when you're I the after, I can, my mind can be a mess, but the 18 will be right. Well, you're, you're obviously training all the time. You you never take off any time at all. Do, Not you, at all. do you take, do you take off of like, do you back off of some of your broadcasting stuff and take a break from some of that when you're focused on a fight? That's the only thing I change. The moment I sign a fight, I don't do commentary anymore. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if, if even if I, if I, if I have a schedule, like a couple weeks, and I sign a fight, I call the producer, I'm like, take me off. I'm not doing it. Not a chance. Yeah, yeah as you say, you know, you're always training, but, you know, you're going to have to up those miles. 14-mile runs, Cheeto, come on. you got to up those numbers, brother. I want you to be in shape. Uh, all jokes aside, yeah. so with this guy, he's tall, he's long, he's rangy, he's a creative striker. I'm assuming it's be all the way in, in the pocket, or all the way out, never in that middle range where he can catch you where you can't catch him. I'm assuming you're going to sprinkle in some takedowns here and there maybe because you are a very, very good grappler with a lot of great submissions on your record. But after this fight, assuming that you go through Corey Sandhagen, you are declared the winner, whatever way it comes, you got to be thinking title fight next after that. A thousand percent. And, and the guys that I have been beating, it's either former world champions or like top five guys. So, you know, probably for myself, I have a little longer uh, road, but it is what it is. You know, it's life. Some some people have an easier road, uh, a shorter road. I have a longer road. So at the end of the day, life is hard for everybody. So, but I really believe with a solid win on this guy, I'm fighting for the belt regardless, you know, all these hype thing, you know, who got who got more views, who got less views, doesn't fucking matter. You go in there and you put the lights out, the views just come to your way. So I'm just, you know, I'm just plugging away. What do you think of the the mess that's kind of going on at the top with Suhudo and O'Malley and Aljo and, and I mean like it seems so weird to me to see everybody kind of talking about O'Malley deserving to fight for the title or is he gonna fight for the title when like doesn't seem like people mention the fact that you finished that guy so yeah do you think that'll insert you into that conversation and maybe change it a little bit um i feel i'm in that conversation is everything is a matter of you know they all start playing with dates and they all start holding position and that's why when they call me for this fight i was like yeah i take it you know is mm-hmm. i don't i don't see it as a negative thing i don't see it as a, as a going backwards thing. it's just another day in the office putting more reps and just getting more experience. Like if I'm healthy, why sit down? Like there's, there's a bag of money to go and grab. So why not, you know, keep advancing. And I'm beating, I'm beating legit guys. It's not like they're like building my career and shit like that. So the experience I have right now, you can buy that. You can get that. So you can only get it through walking the walk and, I'm getting calmer in there. I'm getting better in there. So, you know, well, well, all these guys just act like a bunch of cons. I'm just going to keep getting better. And by the time I get to them, it's going to be night-night. That's how you know that he's trading with Perillo a lot and hanging out with him. When he starts using foul language like that, my word, Cheeto, we are a classy family show. <laughs> um, also, also, if I'm not mistaken, ESPN... Most improved fighter of the year, is that correct? Yeah, that's 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 a hundred percent thanks to Mr. Mm-hmm. Jason Perillo. Like I started working with him, my language gets better, my <laughs> technique got even better. So 
props to coach right there because this I have a long career, but this is the first time I get an award if I'm not wrong. So we gotta get we got gotta get Anthony Smith down there. Yeah, Come I was on, just man. gonna I was just gonna say, um, I've talked to Perillo a couple times and and we always talk about, you know, hey, we gotta, you know, you gotta get, you know, gotta get you down here, wanna do some training. I thought it was gonna be a little weird there for a while with with Rockhold being there too, and I didn't wanna like cause any waves or anything but now it seems like rockhold and i are we've kind of buried the hatchet and put that behind us but i am curious though i hear anyone that's trained with perillo i hear them say kind of the the exact same thing about how good he is what what makes him so different i'm genuinely I, curious i cutting all the bullshit no hyping up nobody it's just it's just a mindset he really cuts all the bullshit like all of these gyms have like a system and a little pedicure bullshit that you just like, you just buy time. You, mm -hmm. you just make your guys sweat more. A, a guy like Perillo told you, you want to fucking sweat, go in the sun. Like sometimes we train for 30 minutes, but mm -hmm. the comparison I do is like eating like a high dense nutrient food versus junk food. I've been in other gyms. I've been in many gyms and, Everybody does the same shit. They all run like idiots around. They warm up. They glob up. They do one, two, three, back and forth for like two hours. You don't learn shit. You go with him, all of a sudden you learn how to fight. Um, and I give him props on, I said this before, after my, my, my first mini Ben, I would have probably never get here if I don't have somebody like that just to give me the, the most important puzzle and he's just get me better. I work hard. I make sure I'm healthy. I make sure I do my wrestling. I make sure it, I'm always making sure I do my part. But the the the, the captain type of part, like somebody tell you how to execute things, he just I just tell people like he just he just does it different. He mm. he have the right mind, and he really doesn't make you do any bullshit in the gym. There's gyms in the past that I was doing things. I'm like, did I really doing this? Okay, whatever. Let's keep doing. And then everybody's go, 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 go. He's like, yeah, go, go, go. You go, motherfucker. He used to tell you a small, detailed things. And, you know. You yeah, go. yeah. If I can jump in there. Like, like, if you were to watch, you'd be like, there's nothing revolutionary here. There's nothing different or whatever. But it's, it's, it's a lot of it's on the mindset, the mental aspects. Of course, technically, he's going to improve your boxing, your striking, your awareness, your footwork, all these type of things. But it's on, he just really gets you dialed in mentally for a fight. Obviously, the training, the sparring, and all the rest of it, stuff that normal coaches can do. But he does it to a very high level. But it, but this this is it made the biggest difference to me with the mind. Um, but speaking of this, pointing at one of these ahead, we were just saying before you came on, should Anthony Smith get hair plugs? Because you know you can grow a lovely head of hair if right. you want look to. This. I mean, look at me. Oh you know, my gosh, Anthony's it's not great. He's gonna me get hair plugs. Me personally, if I get there, I just just shave every three days, like Joe Rogan or Dana. I usually do. I usually I, do. It's a little long now because of the holidays. I'm not a fan of the putting back hair. Like I just feel it's weird. Like I'm like it is. It is. I like, just let it go. Like <laughs> for an example, I'm full covered on tattoos, right? The moment mm -hmm. I'm fully done, I'm not gonna put shit on top of other shit. I'm using it's done. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's a that's a good question. It. You know, if you wanna do it. And if you feel you will look better, go for it. Fucking go for it. <laughs> Cowboy. Yeah, yeah. see, the, the same people that did Cowboys reached out and they were like, look, they gave like a before and an after. So they took like a picture off my Instagram with me bald and then like photoshopped hair on me. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. W was that before Cerrone was juiced up or after? <laughs> He's looking big. He's looking He's jacked. looking big. Hey, He's lo Cheeto, speaking of tattoos, uh, the the bym page the twitter page you know asked like does anyone have any questions for cheeto and i got a, like i kept getting notifications on my twitter that everyone wants to know if you got a new tattoo recently i finished my bag a couple of weeks ago but i didn't do nothing crazy it was just like clouds and light so i did three sessions with mr cartoon and then the last session was just like details just like make it look nice in the square mm -hmm. mm. nice Nice, nice, nice. Um, New Year's Eve, 
What are the plans, Cheeto? Obviously, you're in training camp now. What is that? Eleven Probably miles. Seven miles. weeks. Seven that weeks. Something like that. Pretty much. Yeah, like New Year's Eve. You know, dinner with the family. Couple, you know, fireworks for the kids, oh. and you know, go to bed. It's like, oh. so, so wholesome. So wholesome. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be drinking heavily. Heavily with Perillo, hopefully. So what we're saying is that Anthony Smith is going to come down. You're going to stay at my house. We're going to do a few, a bunch of BYM episodes in person mm-hmm. live, and yeah. we're going to go down train at Cheetos Gym with Perillo, and we'll get some work in, and maybe uh, I'll get in shape. Uh, that'd be sweet. What, what, when is that happening? I don't know, Anthony he, Smith. You tell just, me. Michael Bisping just planned it. I, I think. Did. I think with Rocco in the gym and Anthony. I they can they can push each other, they can beat the shit of each other. What am I, I fucking invisible, Cheeto? I can't I, do anything. I, I think Rock Hold and me would be really good training partners. I honestly okay, okay. I don't want to be Am I fucking invisible? <laughs> two artificial knees, one artificial eye. Do you coach? Tell us what to do. Bro, bro. <laughs> I number one, no, number one, I I whip your ass <laughs> every know. time I'm down there, bro. I know. Okay. So, I, so I don't give me this that. fucking coaching nonsense. Don't lay me out to pasture just yet, <laughs> okay? There's still life in this old dog, Cheeto. Get your fucking hey, ass down here, Anthony. I Bring your mouthpiece, that. your fucking 16-ounce gloves. We'll go to war, brother. Broken back or not, I'll take you all on. Mark my goddamn word, Cheeto Vera. <laughs> I'm not coming when you come in there. I'm a... I'm a... <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, what oh, else is new, man. Cheeto? Anything before we let you go, buddy? We won't oh, keep you too long. Just, you know, family good, training hard, jumping in the ice bath every other day. Ooh. Every most. other day. Every, like, like four times a week, I jump with that you motherfucker see, for five minutes. You see Joe Rogan is doing that shit every single morning. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I, would, if I wouldn't train the way, like, the amount of things I do in the day, that's a great thing, like, for a guy like Joe, right, which is mm-hmm. a su- successful businessman, podcast, and he's not doing anything professional in a way like athlete was because he used to be like a high mm-hmm. level taekwondo guy. Doing that every day probably satisfies that. Uh, because we used to do shit all day, every day. When we retire, yeah. you don't want to sit on the couch and watch TV. So jumping the ice would probably calm down your demons for the, the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm going to awesome. get one. I'm going to get one because my back, that will help with that majorly. Uh, oh, hey, Bisping, I run 13 miles, right? I l- come back home, rehydrate, relax. I wait like an hour or two hours and I jump in that thing. The next day, I'm not sore. Yeah. That thing is no crazy. Kidding. Well, that's because you run all the time as well, so your body's that's used to it. Cool, but like, but, but, but help. How, how, how long do you sit in the, the ice bath for? Everything is a process, right? My first time, I last probably two seconds, but now, like, I, I get to five minutes easy. Like, I just jump. The, the, it's only the first minute or two. After that, after that, it actually starts to feel warm in a weird way, doesn't it? The skin starts yeah. to mm-hmm. tingle. Because, you're, because you just accept it. You're just like, yeah, fuck it. It's yeah. a ball, but it's good for me. She I got I to gotta, I gotta get one of those, like, real super fancy ones. I bet, like, I bet I, Cheeto I, probably I, has it. Yo. Really? <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get one of those. Yeah, I, I have the. I can, I can send the number of the owner to you too, and you guys talk to him. Yeah, yeah no, please do. Maybe sweet. we'll do a little Instagram. We'll. we'll do a little BYM yeah. video of it. We'll get one for free. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, I want as well, Cheeto. Cheeto's got the sauna at the house. I'm trying to get a sauna, but the problem oh, yeah. is they take months to deliver, and then you've got to get someone to put it together. But that's what I want because I've got a hot tub and a pool, and I've got the gym in the garage. Then I'm gonna get the sauna and the ice bath. That's what I have here. It's great, man. Yeah. I don't have to go to anywhere to do my sauna or ice, but do it here is one of the best investments I probably ever did. In terms of recovery, that helps. Majorly. It's great. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great. All right, then. All right. Um, well, I guess we'll say goodbye, Cheeto. You've offended yeah. me. You know, I, all, all I'm good for these days is coaching. Okay? Hey, <laughs> let the guy that is fighting... Bye. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to set him on rock hold. I'll, I'll have a little bit. Last time me and Anthony Smith trained together, I tapped him out. Okay, so we're never going to roll again. Because That's actually true. <laughs> so, I, I'm dying well, out. Cheeto, I was like, forever. Cheeto, I was like 20 years old. Was he well, forgets to put well, that part in? When we move, he thinks we're the same way. Then throw big punch. I'm like, yo, relax. I tap <laughs> you. I I I give you little taps, little love taps, bro. <laughs> 
Do a fucking throw at me. <laughs> um, uh, just, just quickly on this, uh, Aljamain Sterling's talking about if he beats Henry Cejudo, he's going to go up to 145 pounds. What do you think of that? I think he's too big for make the weight class. He's cutting that much weight is cheating to me. I'm like, you're kind of like a pussy if you cut that much weight because you want to be bigger and stronger because he really doesn't hurt nobody, but he makes you carry his wave, take you down. Like, I'm 155 pounds in or out of camp. I feel that's like a natural 135 pounder. And I'm still thinking I got a shit lot of weight because 20 pounds is a lot. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker weighs like 170, 180 pounds when he's eating fucking God knows what. And... Yeah, you can make that way. That that's why he's been KO unconscious because the amount of weight he cut. I'm like, if you touch him, he he might go down. So, I I got, I got two more quick questions I want to ask you about Cejudo versus Aljamain. How do you see that going down? I believe Cejudo got a little more speed and have a better striking base. I just think Sterling is just too big for him. Like he's gonna shoot a shitty shot, but the strength is gonna make him go to him and make him carry his weight. Because even Cruz was able to get to Sehuda's legs. I mean, mm -hmm. you can be Olympic, whatever you are, but this is MMA. If mm -hmm. I punch in the face, you're not this problem. So it's a different animal. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, hold on, I went blank. I was listening to what you were saying. I had two questions. One, Sehudo versus... Sterling. Aljamain mm -hmm. Sterling. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, last one. <laughs> TJ Dillashaw. Do you believe he's retired or do you think he's playing this trick, this game with coming out of the testing pool, take steroids, recover, and then come back in? What do you think's going on there? Fuck, you know, if he comes back, it will be weird, right? Just because he tests positive already and he says he's, he's retiring for good. So, because it's crazy, the moment you retire, you're out of the pool. I'm like, at least test the guy for a year. I don't know. Or anybody, right? But who knows? I, I really believe even if even if you start a random test you, they can only test you from six to six. So if you have money and a decent doctor, I'm mean, I believe people are still cheating until this day. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Me too. I, I heard there's drugs you can take and literally overnight kind of like disappear. I'm like, you can go for vacation, you can go like like you said, it's effective, but I'm like, are you sort of testing people in the fucking, in in a third world country, or deep down in fucking I don't know Russia? I don't know. I live in fucking California. They come to my house all the time, but I would probably rather die than cheat. So mm. that's just me, right? Mm -hmm. no, it's not just you. It's Anthony as well, and myself. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain. I, I don't think it's fair to say. There's a lot of people that would cheat, but I think that the people that kind of have our mentality, I don't know, what do you get? What do you two think? What percentage of people do you think have that? I would rather die than cheat. How many people? Anthony, I think it's way less than the ones that are willing yeah. to take help to grow some muscles and look better and feel better. And again, it's not easy to wake up and do this amount of work. I actually great for this i love this i'm a high energy person most people that do drugs they can do three four times a day practice and feel great but also there's people that every other month something is popping out oh this hurt this break mm -hmm. that you know that's just weird right if i run this amount spar on monday wrestle on tuesday and you know i'm not knocking on wood but my my body's not falling apart it means because i'm natural mm. Yeah, you know, I I had this conversation with Dominic Cruz, um, in Vegas at the pay per view, and he had seen that I had brought up the stuff with Connor being out of the pool and then coming back and all that stuff, and he had like a really, a really good question. He was like, "Are are you mad at Connor for cheating, or are you mad because these other guys get a injury proof and heal faster than we do?" Like, is, is it really the cheating thing? Or are you mad because you don't get the same, the same benefit? Or, or because you didn't think of it? Is that kind of what he meant? No, it's more like, are, are you mad because they're cheating? Or are you mad because they're doing something that you're not allowed to do? And it was actually a really good question. Like, I, and it came down to it's because they're cheating 
and getting an advantage that I don't get to have. You know, like it's not, I don't care about the muscles. I don't care about the weightlifting. I don't care about the punching power. I, I don't care about any of that shit. But being able to heal faster and not be out as long and that's, that's a and, great advantage other people have. Yeah. Yeah, and being able to injury proof yourself where your ligaments are stronger, your your joints are stronger. Like that shit pisses me off. If I file the USADA thing and I'm like, hey guys, I'm gonna be on I don't know, on Big Bird on the weekend, and I give him the address of the exactly house, I can fucking go for a walk in the woods and they will never find me. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. this USADA thing really works? Uh maybe, maybe not. Because it's like they have my home address. But if I'm training, they have to wait here until I come back. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure doctors can tell you, like, just make sure they don't test you in the next three hours and you'll find. Right. Mm-hmm. So you they can go hide through. out for three hours. Like, it's, that's the thing. Like, it's possible for sure. And I think Cheeto's right. I think that there's a, a much smaller amount of people that are like us than we'd like to believe. You know what I mean? I feel they should be testing anytime. They can come two in the morning. They can come twelve at night, because them. That changed a lot. You don't have that six to sip gap. I'm like, I, before if I have a headache and somebody give me a Tylenol, I take a picture, send to Novisky, and I say, like, "Hey, bro, yes or no? Good, go for it." Play. Like, mm-hmm. I'm in the doctor. My elbow or my shoulder, whatever hurts. They want to do PRP, and I know that's legal. He says PRP is fine. Don't do peptides. And I'm like, and I'm, I have my conversation with him. I haven't deleted since like 2016 mm-hmm. because I don't fuck around, like anything, anything. Even, even I know Thorn, we can do anything for Thorn. But besides that, I text him or call him for fucking anything. Mm. I, don't even, because, I don't even take supplements because I'm too afraid of something being tainted. I take two things for Thorn and... I have taken the thorn stuff. I guess I've done the thorn stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I was talking to my back doctor last week, and he said, in terms of supplements, he said, number one, the majority of stuff out there is garbage and doesn't help you at all. And then obviously Mm -hmm. some of it is tainted. And he said, thorn, for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about here, is a brand of supplements. Apparently, number one, they're FDA approved. They're they're very, very, you know, they do what they set out to say, because a lot of them say, promise a lot of shit and don't do anything. Don't yeah. help you with recovery. But more importantly, you're not going to test positive on a test with Thorn products. We are going to let you go on this, Cheeto. We have a quiz, a video question from a believer. I don't know what it is. Brian, would you like to come on and pose the question? Forget one of the best guests of the year, friend of the show, multiple. But Cheeto never says no. He, he, he says straight away, a big smile on the face, even though I don't pick up his phone calls i ignore him <laughs> he, he gives me no credit you know but brian are you there i am yeah. here and oh. uh and we got a question here from uh abby wagoneer old abby hey bym pod my name's abby you might know me better as the fight space one on twitter and me and my recording buddy sebastian here have got a question for cheeto michael and anthony we want to know what the moment was for you that made you realize that mma was your sport For me, it was the first time that I ever sparred at my very first MMA gym. I got punched in the mouth during one of the rounds and cut my lip. And then my coach at the time walked into the cage with a paper towel, wiped the blood off my face, and without even blinking, told me, don't bleed on the mats. So what was that moment for you? I also have a question for Anthony. I wanted to find out if you had received the package that I sent for your Bits and Bobs request and what your reaction was to opening that up because I I have to imagine it was pretty funny. All right, Cheeto, what was the big moment for you when you thought to yourself, MMA, this is the one for me? Okay, I was was born a street fighter. I was on the street fight weekly, right? And when I was like around 15 years old, I was was in my friend's house and and we were like finishing skateboarding and we just hanging out. And his brother was in the room just watching videos and it was loud and he was screaming. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? So we opened the door. He was watching highlights of Pride FC. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, are, 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 are they real? Like, and we watched 
privacy highlights for a couple hours. And I told myself, fighting the crowd, the blood. I was like, I want to be a fucking fighter. And that moment I told myself, I think I find my fucking job. I think I find my... Because the day before that, I was lost. I was just getting in trouble, doing everything that they told me not to do. I would do it. And that day I was like, where to go? And really that was the day I was like, I'm fighting. I'm going to be a fighter. Nice. Beautiful. Awesome. I, I, and I think a lot of us can relate to that. We'll let Anthony answer his question when you've gone. But Cheeto, I want to say you're, you're a regular on the show. But more importantly than that, love you as a brother, as a friend. I love watching your career. Love seeing the improvements. Uh, and I look forward to see, seeing you take that belt this year. And then the response when you go back to Ecuador as champion of the fucking world. And there's a huge parade in the streets of Carabarabarara, whatever the capital is. I don't know. What's the capital of Ecuador? Ito. Ito. <laughs> Brother, thank you very much. Hope you had a great Christmas with your family. Anthony Smith, any, any parting words for the great Cheeto Vera? Yeah, man. I just look forward to watching you fight, man. I, I, I love myself. I love me a Cheeto Vera fight. So uh train your ass up brother we'll see you soon i will thank you guys see, see you soon Take i'm care, gonna man. come down there and whip your ass <laughs> oh come on mikey be nice. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here come on take care there he is what a guy